Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here to how to correctly scale your Google Ads campaigns in 2021 and onwards. Let's face it, with the changing time period, a lot of people have begun using Google Ads and this is a very unfortunate thing for a lot of Shopify store owners simply because like Facebook Ads, the competition with Google Ads is definitely increasing. Now, does this mean Google Ads is dead? Not at all. In fact, it is nowhere close to where Facebook Ads is as of right now with the saturation and even with the saturation, a lot of people, especially Shopify store owners, are crushing it still with Facebook ads but that does definitely mean that you will need to use some different strategies than what you were using before and with scaling that is one of the main things that has changed what I'm personally finding experience with so let's just get right into it the first thing you'll have to do in order to find any type of success with this video however is to destroy that like button until it turns blue in addition to that I actually just recently opened a Google Ads marketing agency called Yoru marketing I'll be covering more about that towards the end portion of the video but if you want me to run your Google ads for you and your Shopify store is doing over $50,000 in sales every single month, send me a message on Instagram at dedicated young or go directly to my agency's website and book a call directly with me to see if we can work together. But let's just get right into it. So right here, I have a few of my campaigns open as of right now. And this is actually a very surprising thing because if you have been following me for a while, you have gotten to look into my Google ads account for my main Shopify store several times and within those periods of times I never really had this many campaigns running but right now as you guys can see with just those that are filtered out there are currently 21 campaigns running I'm not counting some of the other search campaigns that have running so over 20 campaigns in total right now and this is where the biggest change has happened simply because these 21 campaigns they're not testing campaigns majority of them are scaling campaigns if we go in and rank by the overall ROAS we can see that the ROAS is ranging from 8.14 all the way down to the lower end about 1.08 and so forth but um, almost all of these are scaling campaigns now exactly why do i have so many campaigns what is the main difference compared to before when it comes to really moving your shopify store or e-commerce brand to the next level with google ads we're going to cover how to start scaling via google ads and the first thing we're going to cover is one of the main strategies which i'm currently using now again if you have been following me for a while you know that i used to recommend something called a single product campaign also a sac campaign that has slightly changed now in 2021 especially when i'm recording this video right now in october to something called the product ad group campaigns now does this mean i don't run standalone campaigns for single products anymore no that is not the case we'll be covering that shortly but i have been finding a lot of good results with product ad group campaigns exactly what is a product ad group campaign just like a single product ad group campaign also known as the sac where there was only one product running within that campaign a products ad group campaign is a campaign with similar products all grouped together from the same niche or the same style of the product maybe different variants and this is only done once you find one major winning product or one simple winning product from that given niche so for instance before we continue on with this, if you had a 3D printer selling, but if you had a variety of 3D printers on your store, so about 10 3D printers, but only one or two of them were selling really, really well, and you noticed that, what you would go ahead and do is you would create a products ad group campaign, meaning stuff all of those 10 different 3D printers inside one campaign, and whatever the bid is, you want to slightly increase the bid for this new campaign compared to the original one, and we'll be covering bids shortly. But what I'm finding the most success with with these product ad group campaigns is making them manual CPC plus enhanced CPC. Now, does this mean that you are not going to be able to scale the products ad group campaign, also known as a PAC with other bidding strategies? No, but in my own experience, I've been noticing that manual CPC plus enhanced CPC has been working really, really well. If we go ahead and look at some of my top performing campaigns, like this one right here, this one, this one, this one, and even this one, these are all running on manual CPC with enhanced CPC. For the bid, I'll be covering that shortly, but that is the main bidding strategy I am using for these majority of the campaigns. And the top four that are currently performing really well are running on manual CPC with enhanced CPC. That lets you know that that bidding strategy does definitely work. This one right here is running on target ROAS percentage. 
I was only able to change this to target ROAS from manual CPC with enhanced CPC simply because of the campaign getting over 50 sales within a certain given time period. This campaign has been running for several weeks now and it already got me over 50 sales, hence why I changed this to target ROAS. As you can see, the results have been absolutely amazing. This campaign right here, this is the only campaign not running on manual CPC with enhanced CPC. Believe it or not, this campaign right here is running on maximized clicks and it is a scaling campaign. What I've personally been finding success with, and this is the second thing, is that you can also find good results scaling a product via the maximize clicks option. Now, does this always work? No, but here's exactly the process that I take in order to really test out these two bidding strategies because a lot of people, including myself, believe in testing products, but do we really take the time to test bidding strategies? A lot of the times, ad accounts can provide completely different results with one bidding strategy compared to the other bidding strategy. Some ad accounts may do really well with manual CPC and enhanced CPC. Other ad accounts will do absolutely amazing with maximize clicks. The only way to know which way your ad account moves is to test both of them. And here's exactly what I do. Let's say I have a products ad group campaign or a single ad group campaign for a single product that I want to kind of start scaling. What I would do is I would take that campaign and I would run it on manual CPC with enhanced CPC and I would try to troubleshoot that campaign. I'll be covering troubleshooting campaigns very shortly, but I would simply try to see and find different ways to make that campaign work. If that campaign does not work after seven days of trying, I shut off that campaign completely. I restart that campaign now with maximized clicks. And as for the bidding strategies, it's the same for both of these strategies. You want to keep it around two cents above your original bid within the general testing campaign to 10 cents. Meaning if your 3D printer had a bid of 40 cents within the general testing campaign and it was absolutely crushing it, you might want to bid on the new products ad group campaign or the SAC. 42 cents up to 50 cents. That is just the general price point you wanna be staying within for the bidding in order to stay profitable while getting good results. And now does this mean this is gonna work all the time? Of course not. A lot of the times your standalone campaigns, product ad group campaigns might actually fail but that is why we're giving it two tries via these two different methods. Here is a very important thing. You do not wanna exclude that winning product from the original campaign. A lot of people believe that because they wanna scale now, it's time to exclude that product from the original campaign so there is no kind of competition with each other. And that is the worst thing you can do simply because if the scaling methods don't work, now you have to go in and restart that product within the general testing campaign. Sometimes that restart can actually fail because now it has been shut off for seven days, 14 days. The data has kind of become stale and Google now has moved on to showing other products from that campaign. So that can actually be a bad thing. Rather, what you want to do is change the priority from medium or small, whatever it is, to high for the PACs and the SAC. These two types of campaigns always run on high priority, but that's definitely one thing you should be doing. And a lot of the results I'm finding that are positive results are from product ad group campaigns. Now, just to kind of recap, let's look at which campaigns are actually product ad group campaigns. So the ones I'm checking right now here are all product ad group campaigns. The rest are standalone campaigns and so forth. So right here, as you guys can see, Overall, I have selected nine, some of the top performing ones with eight ROAS, four ROAS, three, and then almost three break even are product ad group campaigns. So this tells you that these campaigns are actually working. I'm just looking at this month's worth of data, nothing else, but definitely worth a try in order to scale your store via Google ads even further. Let's now move on to the second way of scaling, which is of course with single ad group campaigns, my second favorite way of scaling. My first favorite now is product ad groups. It just makes more sense to me, but as you guys already saw, I do have a lot of other campaigns, which are just single ad group campaigns, because sometimes you just have one product within a given niche on your store. So what do you do with a single ad group campaign? You only want to have one product within this kind of campaign. Again, manual CPC plus an end CPC to begin if you have over five to 10 sales. And by the way, you should only be trying to scale a product if you have three to five sales or more. So this is why you can directly start with manual CPC with enhanced CPC. If this fails, again, move on to part two, which is maximize clicks and the bidding stays the same. So increase that by two cents all the way up to 10 cents. And now if we go on to my Google Ads dashboard to look at exactly which products are SACs, we can see that these are the following products, which are currently standalone campaigns. Now this is kind of the second way 
of scaling and as you guys can see this is not as effective as the first way of course i do have a few winning campaigns right here 5.81 this has been running quite well the second one right here 5.69 the one i changed into target roas this one 3.61 so the results have been good but overall i would still personally go after the product ad groups campaign scaling method because again it just makes more sense to me instead of spending all of your budget on one product why not just add 10 products within the same niche and go from there but this brings me to the final way of really scaling which is at least when it comes to the general product is the general testing campaign this is something i just recently started doing and i'm going to be showing you guys the results i have with this method so far so if we go ahead and go down just to find that general testing campaign which i have running it is this one right here so overall for this month 1800 dollars spent and about 3.0 in ROAS. now this percentage right here is not fully up to date because this month so far it's only been 10 days google takes about 14 days fully to really allocate the purchases to the correct campaigns and all so that's why it's only about three ROAS, not the best but this ROAS had become very, very low just a few days prior to this, simply because with maximized clicks, I was testing around different bids and the bids may not have been ideal for the kinds of products I had within the general testing campaign. So what I decided to do instead of just letting each day go with the low ROAS percentage, I decided to completely revamp this campaign into target ROAS. And I was only able to do this because this campaign right here has over six figures worth of data. If we change this to all time, we can see that this campaign has spent $173,000 to get back $722,000. Absolutely insane number right here. But as I've already said, this campaign was not performing the best for the past few weeks. Hence why I tried something completely different. And so far, it has been performing much better than the days prior to this one. So that is one thing you can do in order to really scale your general testing campaign. Just give Google a lot of the control over the bidding because sometimes you may be completely wrong when it comes to bidding, especially if you have products within different price points if you have products all the way from fifty dollars up to five thousand this might be really ideal for you so i definitely recommend giving it a try but just know that this is a very big change you want to give about 14 days for the campaign to get back on track this brings me to the next point on the list which is bidding strategies without really understanding the bidding strategies you don't want to go with one or the other strategy for bidding so let's cover the bidding strategies really quick maximize clicks exactly what is that when it comes to scaling when it comes to scaling this is not the best way to go but i still try it out but it's not the best way to go because this generally leads to lower quality traffic why because with maximize clicks it gives you the impression right from the main maximize that means that google is going to aim at getting you as many people as possible onto your website as many eyeballs as many clicks regardless of whether it is really buying intent or not now why does this really work with general testing campaigns because with general testing campaigns you really cannot set a bid per product with manual cpc with maximized clicks you can kind of put them through a funnel so the funnel would be your general testing campaign it goes then into your retargeting funnel which is covered by the general testing campaign itself because if you followed some of my other videos or if you are in my google ads mastery course you already know how to do cold traffic targeting and warm and hot traffic targeting with the same general testing campaign so it's kind of like this funnel that gets created and that is why maximize clicks are ideal for general testing campaigns because you want to be getting data as fast as possible so that people can kind of go inside the circle and go round and round but next bidding strategy is manual cpc without an end cpc this might lead to lower amount of traffic overall, but it kind of just gives you the ability to control your bids per product. Now, I personally don't really recommend this or prefer this over the manual CPC plus enhanced CPC because I just want to give Google a little bit more data to work with, a little bit more control to work with on my campaigns because Google is way smarter than me simply because it is an algorithm. It is a machine. It's very hard to beat a machine or a computer. So with manual CPC and enhanced CPC, the bid is kind of depending on Google's algorithm and overall learning. Even though you set a bid of 40 cents for your product with manual CPC plus enhanced, it can go all the way up to 43 cents, 45 cents, sometimes even up to 50 cents if Google thinks it's right. And a lot of the times, Google is right, as you guys saw with my results. So this is one method I recommend along with maximize clicks. Of course, you should always be trying different things. So also try manual CPC without enhanced CPC checked.
But this now brings me to the final section of really running your campaigns at scale. Exactly what should you be looking out for? How should you go about troubleshooting? There are three different things you want to keep an eye out for. Number one thing that you should want to look into troubleshooting is it's not spending the entire budget. If we go back to my campaign, it's right here and scroll all the way down. For example, this campaign right here, this campaign has a budget of $50 a day. It's been running for quite some time now, but as you guys see, it's only spent about $4, nowhere close to where I wanted to be spending. And it's been running for again, a few days. So exactly what should you be doing? You want to be increasing the beta by five cents to 10 cents every three to five days. If that campaign is profitable, do not do this. If the campaign is unprofitable or losing you money, even if it's getting you sales, because that is just not the right way to go about doing that. So what I personally would be doing is if we go inside this campaign right here, we go into the settings section, we can see that the bid currently, and this is running on manual CPC with enhanced CPC. So we're going to go to product groups. We can see that the bid right now is 35 cents. So what I would do is I would just change this over to 40 cents just to give this a little bit of a better range to work with. And hopefully within the next two to three days, while I'm monitoring this, I do see some improvements in the overall cost because there's really no point in running this campaign if it's not going to spend the entire budget. It might as well scale via the general testing campaign. Again, something I cover within my Google Ads Mastery course. But second thing you want to look into troubleshooting is are there sales or not? Because if there's little to no sales while you're spending the entire budget, then that is a bad thing. And if it is a high bid, meaning if you're already bidding up to 10 cents higher than what you should be bidding or what the original bid is within the general testing campaign, you actually want to lower that bid by five cents to 10 cents every three to five days. So for instance, if we go right here and if we look at these campaigns right here, so far this campaign has spent $42.99, but this camp the products within this campaign are very high ticket. So I would let this run for a little bit longer and not really do anything right here. But if let's say it has spent $150 or $500 without a sale, then I would just decrease this bid up to 35 cents or even 30 cents. Again, kind of five to 10 cent range right there. But if it is a very low bid already, so for instance, if we go back to one of my campaigns and this one right here, if we go inside to the settings section and this campaign is on maximize clicks, we can see that the bid is very, very low. So if the bid is very low and the campaign is still spending the entire budget, but with no sales, that is actually when you want to do the opposite. You want to increase the bid by five cents to 10 cents. A lot of the times Google ads users don't realize this, but your campaign may actually be suffering because the bid is not high enough. So you don't want to really have that happening with your campaign. And if you already know it's a very low bid, maybe you decrease the bid from the original test campaign instead of increase it, just increase it by five to 10 cents, monitor for three to five days. If it doesn't improve, try again by increasing. If it still doesn't improve, just shut off that campaign and do step number two, which is maximize clicks. But third thing you want to look into troubleshooting is sales, but with low ROAS. You're getting sales for that product. You're happy about that, but you're not satisfied with the return on ad spend. What should you do? You want to lower the beta by five cents to 10 cents. That is the easiest way to go about kind of trying to make that campaign into a profitable campaign. So just lower by five cents to 10 cents. I recommend five cent decrements or five cent increments. Don't be too crazy when it comes to increasing or decreasing, but that is generally it for scaling your Google shopping ads campaigns. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have started a Google ads marketing agency called Yoru Marketing, where I personally go in and control your ads for you. So if you find yourself doing $50,000 or more in monthly sales, and if you're a Shopify store, e-commerce brand, whatever it may be, just send me a message on Instagram at dedicated young to find out more, or you can go directly on my website at yorumarketing.com and schedule a call there to speak directly with me. The call is free and you will also also get a free action plan and strategy session for your ads account because I'll personally look at your ad account for you. But if you found any type of value in this video, smash the like button and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.